सदवाणी ए कलेक्शन ऑफ श्री आनंदमय मास टीचिंग्स इज बीइंग कंटिन्यूड अनलेस वन इज ब्लेस्ड विथ हिज ग्रेस इज इट ऑल पॉसिबल टू प्रे टू हिम सच कंसिडरेशन समाइम्स सर्व एज एन एक्सक्यूज इफ हिज ग्रेस वर नॉट अपॉन यू एट ऑल टाइम्स यू कुड नॉट इवन बी ए लाइफ टेक द ट्रबल टू एग्जामिन योर लाइफ पेशेंटली एंड यू विल गेट सम आइडिया ऑफ हिज मर्सी स्कैटर्ड ऑल ओवर दी अर्थ देर आर इन्यूमरेबल थिंग्स इन ऑर्डर टू कलेक्ट एंड कन्वर्ट दैम इन टू यूजफुल कमोडिटीज मशीन्स एंड फैक्ट्रीज आर एट वर्क एंड साइंस इज कॉन्स्टेंटली इन्वेंटिंग न्यू एक्सपीरियंट्स एंड गैडजेट्स इफ विद सिमिलर जस्ट यू पुट योर हार्ट एंड सोल इन टू कॉलिंग डाउन हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस यू विल वेरी सोन बिकम अवेयर ऑफ इट डिस्टिंकली एंड अनडिनाइबली ही मैनिफेस्ट्स थ्रू एक्शन let your work be prompted solely by pure unselfish motives by the force of your prayers the rigid knots that cause your inertia will be undone you will then be able to see by direct perception that like sunlight he pervades everything truly weakness is man's greatest sin to avoid any waste of one's physical energy is very important food and recreation in moderation give sustenance to the body purity of thought aspiration and the remembrance of god provide the right nourishment for the mind to keep the mechanism of body and mind in good condition makes it easy to find the self atma who is their master to have continuous water supply in a city the pumps must be worked day and night likewise in order to keep the heart filled with the sweetness of the divine presence the constant remembrance of him is essential if you can at all times remain engrossed in self inquiry that is tatva vichara japa or meditation it is indeed excellent if not endeavor by all means such as kirtana puja yagna the reading of scriptures visiting temples and shrines contacting saints and sages going on pilgrimages and so forth to keep the thought of god fixed in your mind let all your actions be done as an instrument of god live your life in the world purely in this spirit and all will be well a person who is able to remember god's name or his presence with every breath day and night abides in the continual awareness of him all his outer activities are then accomplished automatically and effortlessly like the movements of marionettes <clears throat> do you know what real worship is the expression of man's love of god when something is boiled in a closed vessel there comes a stage when the vapor will push up the lid and unless force is used the vessel cannot be kept covered any more in a similar manner when while being engaged in japa or some other spiritual exercise a wave of ecstatic emotion surges up from within it it becomes difficult to check it this ecstasy emotion is called bhava it emerges from deep within and expresses itself outwardly at first it arises only for brief spells but by spiritual practices it is gradually strengthened for mahabhava the supreme source of divine love and inspiration is present in every human being and given the opportunity it functions freely and spontaneously in the measure as this state of divine love becomes more constant the aspirant is vouchsafed a glimpse of his beloved religious practices carried out mechanically without deep emotion are like artificial flowers very beautiful to look at but devoid of perfume kirtana may be performed in great style the hall almost breaking with the throng of the congregation but if the singing is without deep feeling bhava there will be no response from on high the deity answers only to the call of the heart therefore it is imperative to be ever vigilant and make sure that outer observances go hand in hand with single mindedness and purity of aspiration fire kept ablaze with plenty of fuel is bound to shoot up to great heights you often declare that the ego is the root of all evil 
in actual fact however this is not so the sense of i implies will power and self exertion while the ego is the cause of birth and death it also helps towards liberation the development of the ego and the spirit of independence has made the individual feel cut off from god to uproot this sense of separateness the use of will power is indispensable the man who has merged his ego in the divine or surrendered it completely to god almighty the lord of the universe may depend on the working of providence but a person with a strong sense of self reliance who feels that he is the doer must exert himself in everything he undertakes so long as intelligence rules man's life it means that the ego still exists and that he is responsible for his actions and their results resign yourself entirely to him or else be intensely absorbed in self enquiry although karma may still have to be worked out by and by the perplexities and problems of the ego will diminish and finally fade away although god is ever present within as well as without it is necessary to keep his remembrance awake in all one's thoughts and actions for the tendency is samskaras acquired in countless former births blind man with such force that the quest of god does not come to him easily nevertheless even wet wood is dried by the heat of fire and finally absorbed by it similarly will one's interest in the objects of sense dwindle more and more by the power of intense contemplation of god until a glimpse of him who is all bliss gladdens the heart thus alone with your worldly pursuits always try to give at least some thought to him <coughs> i do not ask any one to leave his family in order to meditate in the jungles what this body requests of you all is to live your family life according to dharma just as a treasury without treasure has no value equally worthless is human life devoid of religion what is destined to happen will happen is a perfectly true saying if you look back on your own life and on the lives of others you will come to realize how little man himself can do to shape events if you look back on your own life and on the lives of others you will come to realize how little man himself can do to shape events and how most things depend on the inscrutable law of a hidden power the universe runs its course in a perfect way according to the will of the supreme father of all therefore your maxim of life should be to welcome whatever circumstances god provides for you the firmer you become established in this spirit the more complete will be your resignation in god's will and by your devotion and faith in the divine power the scales will fall from your eyes to say that all action is prompted by god's will sounds very beautiful but in actual fact we do most of our work ultimately for sense gratification this is why success makes us so happy and failure depresses us a man who is employed by another is not so very concerned whether there is profit or loss as a result of his work if everything is done exclusively at as god's service one simply attends to one's duty without giving a thought to his outcome once it is over keeping his remembrance alive from the beginning to the end of each task dedicate all action to the supreme being and you will be free from care and anxiety the great mother mahamaya is the origin of creation when the de- desire arose in her to play the game of life she divided herself into two namely ma, ma and maya and entered the stage of the world concealing herself in the many forms of maya when hard beaten by the blows of fate a human being awakens to real intuition he feels the presence of the mother behind the fleeting appearances and sets out in search of her blessed by her grace her efforts are crowned with success as he realizes her as the prime cause of all creation mahamaya but this is not the end experiences experiencing her as all pervading he becomes merged in her and loses himself in the ocean of sachidananda divine being consciousness bliss 
Thus, he comes to see that what is called moha or maya is the word. In the word is named maha maya, the great mother on the spiritual path. Although their functions are different in manifestation, essentially the two are one. Play the game of the world and you will be captivated by its delights. Unwilling to let them go or if you take to the spiritual path, you will find supreme bliss. However, earthly joys are transitory, whereas divine bliss is eternal. Both have their place. The stage manager of the world drama provides for each one what he needs at any particular setting so that he may gradually be led to his final goal where will be dispelled the error of the duality of Mahamaya, Maya, the great illusion, and Mahamaya, the great mother of the universe. For how many more days can you live by external light like that of sun and moon? When your eyes fail, when your body becomes feeble with age and your intellect clouded, you will be left to group in utter darkness. Set to work while there is yet time and try to kindle the inner light. In the heart of the mind ignite the fire of self-inquiry or the fire of God's name. Fan it into a blazing flame by associating with the holy and wise, by prayers and meditation. Little by little, this light will grow bright and steady and illumine your body inwardly and outwardly. Thereby, the path to self-realization will be made easy. To be active in such, to be active in some cause is called to work and the work that is incumbent on any particular person is called his duty. It is important to think out carefully what exa exactly is in is each one's duty. For the householder and the housewife, it is to look after their home and family. But if a man feels with overwhelming force that he should live worldly life in order to devote himself entirely to the supreme quest, then this becomes his undeniable duty. Consequently, there is no absolute standard that can be applied to one and all. Each one's duty is determined by circumstances, time, place and the nature of his purpose in life, that the contemplation of God is the first and foremost duty of every, every human being has been forgotten by the majority of people. In ancient Hindu society, man's life was regulated by division into four ashramas phases. Brahmacharya, the life of a student with the essential condition of conserving the life force for the sake of ultimate self-realization. Grihastya, the stage of the householder with its various duties to society, Vanaprastha, retirement into solitude for the sake of divine contemplation, Sanyasa, complete renunciation. But at the present time, only the householder's ashram is still in force. Therefore, the opportunities that people used to have of preparing themselves for the highest goal by worldly experiences as well as by renunciation are not available anymore. Pleasures and enjoyments are sought from beginning to end and the majority of men spend their whole life in worldly pursuits. This is why nowadays far too little thought is given to questions such as what is the purpose of life, what is this world and what the next. In the world people become rich by adding zeros to one. And on the spiritual path, the aspirant concentrates on zero alone in order to attain to the one truth. Thus, it is obvious that these two paths lead in entirely opposite direction. Opposite direction. It will be worthwhile to ponder seriously over the fact that without the one, the zero have no value whatever. Therefore, one should with complete faith and reliance on the one ever strive after the one goal so that there may be no dread of poverty under any circumstances. The efforts prompted by one's true nature, Swabhava, that are made in order to discover one's own real wealth, Swadhana, are called Sadhana. Potentially, every action is a Sadhana, every individual a Sadhaka and God. Being man's real treasure is the sole purpose of all Sadhana. So long as man is worldly, he performs his Sadhana by work done from personal motives for the sake of material success. 
yet unconsciously he is even thereby seeking god for nothing in, is outside of the one whatever anybody does is in the last analysis undertaken in order to attain to the supreme this is self evident the sadhana of the mundane person is directed towards the satisfaction of his wants here the sense of possession prevails and outer activity and enjoyment are the objective there will be a powerful incentive for this kind of sadhana so long as man is harassed by the lash of pain and misery humiliation disagree grief and affection sorry guys it's not disagree it is disgrace grief and affliction i read again this sentence there will be a powerful incentive for this kind of sadhana so long as man is harassed by the lash of pain and misery humiliation disgrace grief and affliction in a way this sadhana also is prompted by man's true nature for not until one has actually felt the string of ceaseless wanting does not awaken to the urgency of discovering the self when a person grows eager to become established in his true being to find his real treasure this marks the beginning of spiritual sadhana and he will learn to act without desire or personal personal motive thereby is laid the foundation of attachment renunciation and all embracing love young and immature people desire what others possess and hanker after petty enjoyments when as a result of religious practices and good works a man in the midst of prosperity is reminded of his real treasure he starts labor laboring vigorously for its recovery the more he exerts himself in this activity of this true nature the fuller will be the knowledge he gains of his inner wealth when fire breaks out in a house it will not die down until everything combustible has been burnt to ashes similarly once real sadhana has begun it is impossible to drop it on the contrary it will gather impetus and intensity day by day and push the aspirant into the swift current of his own particular path to enlightenment first of all the sadhaka ceases to identify himself with his body and mind then his cravings and desires are dissolved to the last trace thereupon the consciousness of complete equality will be born and finally the self which transcends which transcends mind and body will be realized by direct experience this is the ultimate goal of all sadhana single mindedness is its very life faithful trust and patience constitute its powers without observing the injunctions of the shastras it will be difficult to achieve purification of the mind chitta suddhi there is a saying that the house built on the rock of shastric observances cannot be demolished it is important to follow as far as possible the rules of good conduct laid down in the shastras and to be particular about outer and inner cleanliness and purity in order to be received into the presence of a king one has to submit to any number of rules and regulations how much more urgent is the necessity of purity and meticulous care when one goes to visit a deity in a temple or wants to contemplate the divine a man who is well established in his true nature who in other words knows himself who is indifferent to pleasure and pain since he is ever steeped in the basis of the eternal is called a sadhu filled with universal love he is free from cares and worries mani- manifestant of childlike simplicity and contentment the very sight of such a great person spontaneously suffuses one's whole being with a heavenly joy and his proximity evokes divine thoughts and aspirations just as water cleanses everything by its mere contact even so the sight touch even so the sight touch blessing ne the very remembrance of a real sadhu little by little clears away all impure desires and longings union with god is the one and only union man should seek sadhus or saints have had communion 
with God and hence there is a saying grace in their and hence there is a saving grace in their presence like like attracts like for this reason in our times the company of the holy and wise satsanga offers the most potent aid and inspiration to the earnest seeker saints may be compared to trees they they always point upwards and grant shade and shelter to all they are free from likes and dislikes and whoever seeks refuge in them wholeheartedly will find peace and fulfillment when the burning desire to know truth or reality awakens in man he has the good fortune of meeting a saint or sage the holy and wise must be approached <coughs> must be approached with a pure heart and a steady mind with genuine faith and reverence much greater benefit will be derived by sitting still and meditating in their presence than by discussing or arguing the behavior of saints is not to be copied by ordinary people but one should endeavor to carry out in one's life the teachings or advice received from them otherwise it would be like sowing away number of seeds without allowing a single one to grow into a plant this would indeed be a matter of deep regret the way to realize from bondage the way to release from bondage number 1 work and prayer the performance of meritorious acts and good works in harmony with the laws of nature with an eye to the real welfare of one's body and mind and the world at large keeping god's name in one's heart and mind and on one's lips with the help of japa prayer the study of sacred scriptures and discourses on eternal truth two spiritual experience the search after truth through meditation with undivided concentration three the state of pure being personal effort and personal effort and identification with body and mind have come to an end this there is beatitude complete equanimity realization of oneness of all man has become established in the faith of truth on the ekthara one can play ekthara is an instrument actually with one string on the ekthara one can play only one note on the harmonium the whole scale of 7 the average person enjoying hearing the harmonium but the ear of the contemplative the single note of the ekthara sounds sweet for as not the seven but a dividing up of the one note for as for are not the seven but a dividing up of the one note endeavor to let your body be like an ek tara on the string of your mind play unceasingly play unceasingly only the one song jai jagadish hare hail to the great lord of the world if you go on doing this you will come to love singing the praises of god and cease to derive pleasure from anything else just as the water of a lake cannot remain smooth while a breeze is flowing so the mind can never become still as long as thoughts arise with great determination try to drive away all thoughts and become calm and serene at intervals like recourse to silence for set periods of time this will considerably increase your power of concentration whenever you find worldly thoughts agitating your mind resolving resolutely try to chase them away by every possible device just as with the help of ingenious machinery extensive canals and marshes have been drained of all water even so the well of desires and longings will finally be emptied through sustained and single minded practice sugar solution can be purified by boiling it with a few drops of milk similarly can samskaras the impurities that cloud consciousness be removed by the contemplation of god worldly people as a rule take to religious practices only at an advanced stage and soon grow grow weary and lack in energy this is why men and women should be taught from early childhood to make god and the search after truth the center of their lives so that they may not be in their old age 
so may, so that they may not in their old age have to cry out piteously even tide has come my life is ebbing away o lord have mercy upon me and take me across for the maintenance of the body one has to earn money and collect goods it is right to remember at all times that it is of great it is of that it is of even greater importance to cultivate and develop one's inner wealth self restraint is necessary for every human being first of all one must practice self discipline with a view to mastering the body as far as may be when with the help of various rules and regulations the body is trained to obey the mind also gradually realizes the necessity of thought control then the proper thing to do is to combine the practice of physical and mental discipline one body one's body and mind have been brought under control the desire to know one's self is kindled spontaneously if one does not remain lukewarm but gives one heart and soul to the supreme quest the discovery of the self becomes easy so long as one is conscious of the body it is impossible to achieve anything without action it is imperative even to keep in mind that unless one is strict with oneself as a miser who amasses wealth or as a bee that collects honey one cannot make headway on the spiritual path listen do not let your time pass idly either keep a rosary with you and do japa or if this does not suit you at least go on repeating the name of the lord regularly and without interpretation like the ticking of a clock there are no rules or restrictions in this involve him by the name that appeals to you most for as much time as you can the longer the better even if you get tired or lose interest admi- administer the name to yourself like a medicine that has to be given in this way you will at some auspicious moment discover the rosary of the mind and then you will continuously hear within yourself the praises of the great master the lord of creation like the never ceasing music of the boundless ocean you will hear the land and the sea the air and the heavens reverberate with the song of his glory this is called the all pervading presence of his name the world consists of name and form the name is its beginning and the name is its end when the aspirant achieves perfection by concentrating on the name he loses himself in it the world ceases to exist for him and is his ego disappears what then is and what is not although some may realize this it can never be expressed in words if you say nothing at all exists it it's it is so yet if you say everything exists it is also correct do you not see some declare the world to be an illusion while others maintain that it is real many deny the existence of deities and angels others are firmly convinced convinced of it since if one prays to them ferment, fervently fervently enough one can have visions of them and also hear their voices children look upon their clay and rubber dolls as living beings but when they grow older they understand that they have been mistaken thus it can be seen that everyone's faith or disbelief in things is determined by the power and intensity of his ideas at any particular time when when genuine one pointed devotion grows stronger and stronger it does happen that aspirants in accordance with their conditioning and keen desire receive undeniable visions of deities and also hear their voices however for the serious contemplative such experiences are nothing more than periodical feasts for the mind as one advances on the spiritual path and loses oneself more and more in an unbroken stream of divine contemplation various partial realizations and visions do occur although they may be helpful they must never be confused with the ultimate goal water evaporates rises up into the air and forms its clouds but the cloud fulfills its calling only when it condenses into rain drops and refreshes the thirsty earth likewise sadhana does not reach its consummation unless one has been merged in supreme being and attained attained to perfection 
टू बी कंटिन्यूड आनंदमयी मात की जय